Hi there. In this video, we're going to go through configuring the general journal template for the Dynamics 365 Business Central in SmartConnect.com. When it comes to setting up template configuration, we have to talk about four main categories. The first one is some prerequisites. You do have some prerequisites when you're setting this up. Uh, we have to download the template if you haven't done so already. We have to go through the import of processes into SmartConnect.com. And finally, we have to configure the workflow. With respect to prerequisites, there are two different main categories. Uh, the first one is uh, licensing requirements, so what software do you have to have? And the second one is we do have to go into Business Central and set up some web services. As far as licensing goes, you do need to have Microsoft Excel. Uh, we need to use the local installation of Excel. So if you're on Office 365 and you're used to working online, please go ahead and download and install the uh, on-premise version of Excel from your Office 365 subscription. Next is Dynamics 365 Business Central Online. So this template is designed to only work with the online product. If you're running Business Central on-premise, you'll need to download a different set of templates. And finally, you need to have a smartconnect.com subscription. And within that subscription, you need to have room in your licensing for at least two connections. One is going to be Business Central. So if you haven't already set up a, con a connection to Business Central, you'll need to uh, set up a new one, which means you need a license for that. And you'll need a file subscription as well, and or sorry, a file connection as well. And if you uh, haven't set up a file connection before, then you'll need to make sure that you have um, a connection license. Uh, room for that. Okay, within Business Central, we'll need to go ahead and set up these web services. Now, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to go through how to set up the first one there. You can see object ID is number 17. The page name we're looking for is GL Account Card, and we want to publish that service as GL Account Card, and that capitalization is actually pretty important. So I'm going to walk you through the setup of the first one, and then uh, I'll bring back up this slide, and you guys can pause the video and go through and set up the rest. So within Business Central, what I want to do is click on the magnifying glass up here, and I want to search up web services. That's going to come up here. Now, what I like to do when I'm in the web services, I like to filter it to pages only, and then I like to uh, sort it by object ID. So first, I'm going to go through here. I'm going to click on Filter. I'm going to select Page. Now that's going to go through and get rid of all the queries and all the code units because we don't care about any of those when we're connecting with smartconnect.com. Now, because I know I'm looking for something at the top of the list, I'm just going to sort this in ascending. Okay. If you guys remember, my object ID that I'm looking for was number 17. And you can see here I do have two different cases where this has been published as a web service. But if you take a look here under service name, neither of them is GL account card and capitalize quite the same way as the one that's going to be on the slide that I, well, it's on the slide I already showed you. It's also going to be on the slide that I'm going to show you again. So what we're going to do, since we don't have the one we need, we're going to click on New. OK, I'm going to just go here. Now, what I like to do when I'm setting up web services is go, I click the down arrow, and then go select from full list. I find it easier, especially when you get into the higher numbers, like 5,200 and 5,600. I find it easier to search from here. So I'm going to search for GL. OK, and you can see it filters it. GL account card, object ID 17 is the first one in the list. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to say OK. So now you can see it set up the page with an object ID 17. My object name is GL account card. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up GL account card. And again, the capitals and spacing are important. So there's no spaces in that. And the G, L, A, and C are all capitalized. When I've entered that information, I'm going to click on this checkbox right here publish. So that's all it takes to publish a web service. Now, if I click off of that line, you'll see that all of my service addresses get populated. Okay. Again, the important pieces of information are object ID, object name, and the. this is the most important one because you have to actually type that in. You're not selecting it. Okay. So I'm going to pop back to our, oh, sorry, once you get to the end of the list, which is going to be number 5600, fixed asset card, you can go ahead and exit out of this window. OK, and that's all you're going to need to do to publish those services. So now let's pop back over here to our PowerPoint. 
Okay, so again, these are all of the services that we're going to need you to publish. These are the service names right here that we need you to enter in. Again, capitalization is important. So go ahead and pause the video, go through your business central and set up all 10 of these objects. Um, we'll see you in a minute. All right, now the next thing you need to do is actually download and extract the template. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm sure you guys have downloaded stuff before. And honestly, you might be watching the video from this link that I'm showing you. Uh, it depends. Since we're throwing it out on YouTube, you might not be, so I do have to walk through the download process. So you're going to go to smartconnect.com. You're going to click on integration solutions. You're going to filter to template and smartconnect.com. Now, right now, it's a real short list. If you're watching this in the future, though, it's potential that it's a long, much, much longer list because we're adding to these all the time. So you might need to click on Dynamics 365 Business Central under your connection to help filter that list a little further. And then it should be one of the first ones on the list. Again, it's the first one today, but it may not be the first one when you're actually looking at this. Uh, but what you want to find is D365 Business Central Excel Template General Journal. Okay, so it's all well and good to look at a slide, but let's see that in action. So again, I'm at smartconnect.com. I'm going to go to Integration Solutions which is going to take a second to come up. I'm going to click on template. I'm going to click on smartconnect.com. And if there's too much stuff here, because this is the future and we've been real, real busy, I'm going to click on Dynamics 365 Business Central. Okay. Now, again, just like my PowerPoint slide a second ago, this is the first one. I'm going to click through to it. Okay. And you are going to click on download, which is going to download it to your computer. Now, depending what operating system you're using, depending what um, web browser you're using, the download process might be a little bit different. I don't care kind of how you get it there. I happen to have downloaded it earlier. So I've got my file in a local folder. I'm going to right click on the zip file that downloaded and I'm going to extract. Again, your computer might be slightly different depending on what zip tool you have installed and what operating system you're on. I'm just using the straight up Windows one, so I'm going to extract all. I personally like to see it in the same folder. You don't have to do this. You fill your boots with whatever you want. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to say extract. Okay. Now what you should end up with wherever you told it to extract is three files. Two of them are zip files and an Excel workbook. Okay. If you've gotten this far, you have succeeded in the download and extract portion of this video. Okay. So the next thing that we need to do is actually go and import the processes. So we're going to import those to your smartconnect.com. Both of those zip files that I pointed out a second ago need to be imported. Uh, it doesn't matter what order you do them in. Honestly, I don't care. I'm going to show you a particular order, but you could do it backwards if you really wanted to prove me wrong. Okay, so we're going to go to smartconnect.com. We're going to go to system, import. Okay, and again, that's going to take a second or two to get us into the import window. We're going to select files and we're going to drill down to where those files were. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and select this one first. I don't care. You can do this one first if you really want to. I'm going to say, okay. Now it's going to populate the window with most of the information we need. Now for the first file that we're importing, I'm going to click on create new source. Okay. And that's going to populate a little tab for me here. Notice I just kind of scrolled down through. I'm okay with all these process IDs and such. I want to leave all that as it is. Okay, create new source. We'll go ahead and create this source for us. Now under connection, I have to select the business central connection that I'm going to be importing my, my uh, general journals to. So I'm going to select my E1 demo. It's going to chug for a second. What it's doing is it's actually going out and connecting to our business central connection to make sure that we're allowed. Now. If you haven't set up a business central connection yet, so if you have nothing in that list, you're going to need to go and do that. That's a different video. So you may want to pause this one and go find that video or just go set up that connection and then come back to this one. But for now, I've got a list of companies. And again, I'm going to choose the default company that I want to import my general journals to. Okay. Because I published those web services exactly as that slide said a couple slides ago, um, General Journal already exists as a published web service for Smart. 
uh, sorry, for Business Central. So now I can click on Import Integration, and it's going to go through. And hopefully, I'm going to get a message box here that says, you succeeded. Probably just take a second or three. So again, it's creating a data source, and it's creating a process for us. So that was successful. Now, the only reason I'm showing you the second one this time is because it's a little bit different. And again, it doesn't matter what order you did it in. So I had already done the business central general journal. Now I want to do the BC general journal underscore BAL. Okay, and this one exists in case you're using balancing entries. So I'm going to say OK. OK, now instead of creating a new data source, we're actually going to select use Excel source. And we're going to choose the one that just got created, which was business central general journal Excel template. OK, so I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to redo the connection thing. It should be the exact same as the one I did, you know, a minute ago in this video, whatever that was. So again, that's taking a second or two. It's logging in. We're going to default to Cronus US. These web services exist. We know that. So now I can import this. And you can see it was successful. So I'll say OK. And then we're done. So now we're actually ready to move on to the next step which is to configure the Excel workbook. Configuring the Excel workbook actually has a couple different steps. Okay, uh, The first thing we have to do, we have to actually check a setting in our, in, uh, in our Power Query. Uh, then we're going to add our smartconnect.com credentials to it. We're going to add our business central information. And then finally, we're going to refresh the data. Once we've gone through all of those steps, the first three are actually one-time things. You're not going to do this every time. Um, refreshing the data will be something you'll do on occasion whenever you want to use the workbook. OK, so let's go back to where we had our workbook stored. If you guys remember, our Business Central Excel workbook came with us, uh, came with our uh, downloaded template earlier. One quick note before, while this is opening, you actually want this to um, you actually want to store this locally on your C drive. Uh, for whatever reason, it doesn't work as well if you have it stored out on a OneDrive or out on a network somewhere. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I have it stored locally. Now, the very first thing that you need to do before you do anything else is to check your Power Query settings, the privacy setting in particular. Now, to get there, this is supposed to be, just so you know, a one-time setup per computer, but I've actually had to do it a couple times on this computer, so I'm not sure how true that is. Uh, so just double-check it every single time you're using one of these templates. So I clicked on Data within Excel. I'm going to go to Get Data and Launch Power Query Editor right here. Okay, once that pops up on my screen, on my screen. OK, so once that pops up, I'm actually going to click on, it's kind of counterintuitive. I'm going to click on File. Uh, I'm going to click on Options and Settings. And then I'm going to go to Query Options. OK, so again, that's going to pop open. And I want to click on this guy right here, Privacy. OK, and what it should say is always ignore privacy level settings. By default, uh, yours probably looks like this, where it's combined data according to each file's privacy level settings. You need it to be always ignore privacy level, level settings. And then you say OK. OK, and then you can close and load out of here. OK. Now, the next thing you want to do, notice these three tabs down here. You're going to click on Smart Connect Config right here. OK. Now, enter the email address that you log into smartconnect.com with. Excuse me, for me, it's my own email address. By the way, if you have questions, you can either, either email support at, at e1solutions.com or you can email this one, rob.oconnor at e1solutions.com. Now, the password uh, is encrypted for Smart Connect. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on this guy right here, set password, because you probably don't know how to encrypt passwords uh, in your head. So I'm going to go ahead and enter the password that I use to log into smartconnect.com, very cleverly hidden so that you cannot see it. And now it becomes this gobbledygook. Okay, So again, you wouldn't have been able to come up with that gobbledygook on your own. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and then enter, or sorry, then I'm going to click on this guy right here, Update Companies. 
Okay, it's going to take a second or two to chunk away, and then you should be able to drop down this list and see your company listed here for your smartconnect.com company. Now, if you drop that down and it says uh, Dusty's company, then the update companies actually didn't work. Okay, and what that means is you probably haven't gone through that step I told you earlier of going uh, and checking that privacy setting. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and choose my one uh, internal account right here. Okay, now connecting to Business Central is the next part. So I'm not connecting to a sandbox, so I'm going to go ahead and say false. If you are connecting to a sandbox, obviously you'll drop that down and change it to true. Okay, now where do I get all this information to fill in? The first part is my tenant, GUID. So if I go back to my business manager here, my business central. Okay, notice up here in my address, I've got this long thread of gobbledygook right before that slash. This might be the last part of your, uh, your current URL, depending where you are within business central. I'm gonna copy it. That's your tenant ID. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to paste that right here. Okay, the next thing you want to do is enter your business central company name. Now, to get that, you might think your first inclination is going to be to use whatever name is showing up up here. That's actually not quite what you're looking for. So you're going to search up here, you're going to go for companies. Okay, you're going to grab that. And if you take a look, this name column is the one that you want. The display name is what you're seeing over here. Now, in some cases, depending where you work, those might actually match. For me, it's Cronus US. Okay, so I'm going to jump back in here. I'm just going to type that in. Okay, so I'm just going to type that in. Cronus US. Okay, so now I've filled in all of this information. What I want to do, just to make sure that's correct, up here in my tab, I've got Business Central Templates. Okay, I'm going to click on that. I'm going to drop down this view and call up the Setup menu, which loads these three choices here. Again, I'm on the Business Central Templates tab. Once I've got all this populated the way I think it should be, I'm going to go ahead and click on Test. Okay, what I should get is this box right here that says four different messages are true. If I get all four are true, I'm all good. I can move on with my life. If all four are not true, um, if there's anything wrong here, then you'll need to go back and double check your different setups. Okay, mine are all good. So this workbook is pretty much ready to go. The last thing we're gonna do before we wanna use it is we're gonna go back to our data and we're just simply going to click on Refresh All. Now, what that's going to do is go and update all of the drop-down lists that are doing things like document type and account type. It takes, takes a minute or two the first time we run it, so I'm not going to make you watch me update it here in the video. But once you've done the Refresh All, all of these drop-down lists are repopulated, excuse me, are populated with your data, and the workbook is ready to use. So that's our introduction, or sorry, that's our installation video. So hopefully, uh, once you click on your refresh, your workbook will be up and running, your template will be ready to use, and you will be very, very happy importing general journals. Thanks.